Your audience lives in a universe that has depth, a reality that has the vastness of galaxies and the tininess of atoms, a reality that has complex factors of the present being affected by the even more complex factors of the past. This is the reality your audience lives in, a reality of depth. If you're going to try to convince your audience that the world of your story is believable, then you're going to have to present them with a world that has depth also. Convince your readers that the story of your main characters is only a snapshot of what's going on in your world. Convince your readers that the story you're telling is just one of millions of stories being played out in your world. You present them with a world that has depth of time and space. The world of your story was a moving, living, breathing place before your characters came to the scene, and it will continue to move, live, and breathe after they are gone. This is the depth of time. In the world of your story, things are happening in the world even if your characters aren't there. This is the depth of space. Now how do you create this sense of depth in both time and space? It would be impossible to create a world as complex as our own, and it would be impossible to keep track of the millions of stories of the people and creatures in your world you're creating. So what do you do? You create the illusion that your world has more depth than it actually does. Think of a Hollywood movie set versus a set for a high school play. Both are trying to create the illusion of depth, the illusion that the worlds of their stories are bigger and more complex than they actually are. The difference is, however, that Hollywood set designers and set dressers are more successful, or at least they should be, in creating that illusion than a high school drama department. I'm thinking of that stereotypical play in school that has the cardboard moon and paper mache trees, set pieces and props that aren't very convincing. Movie sets, generally speaking, do a better job at creating that illusion of depth. They have more resources to work with. As writers, what can we learn from this? Well, when you write, you present your readers with a point of view. They are seeing what the camera sees. Therefore, you use what your camera sees to support the illusion that your world has more depth than it actually does. This might mean that you have to build a set in your mind and ask yourself questions like, where does this river flow? Where does this road go? Why is this building standing here? And why are all these people moving around? The details you present to your readers can hint to a world that goes beyond what the camera can see. To continue with the movie metaphor, details can point to a world that is bigger than the movie screen. Now you shouldn't try to list off every detail that comes to mind. In fact, listing every possible detail in the scene would bog your reader down with trivial information. But you as the author should know what set pieces are there and what they are there for what the extras are doing and where they're going, what props can be found in the scenes. You should know this because constructing the scene in your head shapes your writing. It shapes how you'll have your characters interact with the world. And if you need to mention a detail, it'll be available to you because you'll already have set it up. Knowing the depth yourself helps you in presenting a world of depth to your readers. Not only does depth make your world more compelling to your audience, it makes your world more believable. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This was a lesson in my world building workshop for fantasy writing. You can get the full course um, on this playlist right here. And if you'd like to get the course without any ads or without any interruptions, you can get it on Udemy, which I'll include in a link in the description. So again, thanks for watching and happy world building and happy writing.